Thank you. you. May be seated. As we come uh, close to this holiday time, we are reminded of the importance of giving thanks. Now, each year when we come to this holiday, I always think it's a good idea to remind ourselves of the importance of giving thanks, not just once a year. Now, this morning I want to broaden uh, our discussion not just about thanks, but also about praise in general. Praise and thanksgiving are different. Very similar, but different. Thanks is when I show appreciation for something that has been done for me. When I am thanking God, I'm saying, God, thank you for what you did for me. Praise is a little bit more encompassing where it's not just appreciation for what God has done, but it's also adoration for who God is. That I can say, God, you are awesome. It's not just thanking God, it's, it's praising God. So this morning I want to talk to you about the importance of praise in our thanksgiving. Now, church, when do we praise God? We should all the time. We do so not just because it was asked of us, but we praise God because he is worthy of our praise. We praise God not just because it's a a beautiful thing for him, but it's also a blessing for us. When we praise God, we are grabbing hold of the very fabric of our own soul. We are doing that which God has created us to do. As you can imagine, what would it be for a bird that would not fly? What would it be for a frog to live its life and not jump? What would it be for a fish to not swim? What would it be to be a groundhog? And What do groundhogs do? (laughs) What would it be like to be a groundhog and not cause six more weeks of winter? The idea is God has created each thing for a purpose, and our purpose primarily is to praise God. When we praise God, then we are fitting right where God wants us to be. He is worthy of our praise, but we are blessed by our praise. And so what I want to talk to you about this morning is that there is one time in our life in which praise is not easy as other times. When we get to painful circumstances, when we get to a place where things are not going the way we think they should, it's in those times where praise is that much more important. And we're going to talk about why. But when we're going through painful circumstances, we don't oftentimes immediately praise God. I mean, we might praise God when we get a new car, But we may not praise God when that car leaves us on the side of the road. But when we praise God, especially through the painful times, it will make a difference in our life. Think about it this way. How would your life be different if you developed a pattern of praise each day? If each day you got up and courageously chose to praise God, how would your life be different? Would it affect you emotionally? Would the way you feel be different if you got up each day and focused on thanking God for what he has done and praising God for who he is? Would your feelings be different? Yes, they would. Our emotional health can be impacted favorably by our praise. Not just our emotional health, but certainly our spiritual health. When we are praising God, we are drawing closer to God. When we draw into his presence, we will be blessed spiritually. What about our physical health? There have been studies done by uh, secular scientists pointing out how an attitude of gratitude impacts us in our physical health. Studies done that demonstrate that our blood pressure, our stress levels are reduced just by having an attitude of gratitude. What about your relationships, relational health? Some of you might be thinking about that one person, the extremely negative person, 
The one that no matter what happens, they find fault in it. That even all the good things that may happen to them, they still do not praise God. You like being around that person? If that person praised God more, do you think they would be more easily accepted? So when we praise God, we are bettering ourselves physically, we're bettering ourselves emotionally, we're bettering ourselves spiritually, and even socially and relationally. Praise is important, not just for us, but also for God. So as we come to this point, we're going to look about how we can praise God, even in difficult times. And if you have a copy of God's Word nearby, we're going to look in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, uh, mainly right in the center of your book, is a book of praise. And in this book of praise, we're going to see specifically how we can praise God even in difficult times. The title of the message this morning is Praise Through the Pain. That even though when we're in difficult circumstance, we can choose to praise God. And we're going to see in Psalms 22 how uh, David in this time in his life had deep despair and definite discouragement. But yet, he chose still to find something to praise God about. So if you found the place, we're going to be in Psalms chapter 22. And as you are able, would you stand with me as a demonstration of respect for God's holy, written, inerrant word. David writing, My God... My God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning, O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I do not find rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you are fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by people. All who see me mock me. They make their mouths at me. They they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me to trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Would you pray with me? Father, we choose to learn how to praise. Father, we choose to to praise you, especially when things are going difficultly. Father, when we find ourselves in whatever situation we find ourselves in, teach us how we can praise you. And that through that, Father, that you would be blessed by our praise, but Father, we would also receive a blessing by our praise. Father, this is our prayer in Christ's name. And God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you're taking notes inside your bulletin, you can jot this down. The main idea I want you to get this morning in how we praise God is simply, I wrote this down, I can choose to praise God even in the difficult times. It's a matter of choice that we can choose to praise God. No one's going to make us do it, but when we make the choice to praise God, especially in the difficult times, that is when God is most glorified. Take a look at this first video. Two thousand sixteen. The year is almost over, and what a year it's been. We watched the world gather at the Olympics in Rio. We witnessed Super Bowl Fifty in San Francisco and we celebrated as the Cubs finally won the World Series. And if we're honest, we'd also admit that 2016 has been far more difficult and challenging than we ever thought it would be. 
2016 saw Hurricane Matthew hit the East Coast with savage force. ISIS continued its terror in Paris, in Brussels, and in countless other locations. A sniper took the lives of five policemen in Dallas. And the presidential election only proved just how divided and fragmented our country really is. 2016 really has been a difficult year. And then Thanksgiving appears out of the blue, and it's hard to find things to be thankful for. Unless, unless we see with new eyes. New eyes that frame the burst of a morning sunrise, reminding us that God is always offering us a fresh start. New eyes that refocus on those meaningful times experienced with close friends and how our hearts are always filled afterward. We might see that family member who brings warmth to a cold day or that retriever that still thinks she's a lap dog. No matter what's happening outside of us, God is always doing something on the inside. And Thanksgiving is that holiday that invites us to see the hand of God and then to express gratitude for what he's offering. Because every ordinary moment is filled with the extraordinary. We just need eyes to see. And maybe, just maybe, we'll begin to see God most clearly when we thank him most often. I may not know all the difficulty that you're facing, and you may be able to relate with this 22nd Psalm as it starts out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? Jesus even turned to these words while he was on the cross. And it may be right now that you feel that great despair. You may feel in darkness. But we can choose to praise God through the pain. What I want you to see is how we can do that. In this psalm, not only is there great discouragement, not only is, is David speaking about his own difficulty, even in understanding why things were happening, but in that difficulty, he boldly declares that he is going to praise God. Take a look in the text again. We're going to see this in verse 3. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you are fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. As we are talking about praising God through difficult times, the first thing I wrote down was this, point number one. I can look back to what God has done. I can look back to what God has done. As we are seeking to praise God, the first thing is we have to be able to get past our own problem. And we have to remind ourselves of God's providence. So instead of just focusing on what's wrong, we need to focus on what's right. And the first thing we can do in focusing on what's right is looking back to the things that God has already done. I wrote this down for letter A under point number one. I can remember God's redemptive efforts. You can choose to remember what God has done to bring you salvation. We talk about this on a general sense. Again, in the text, he's talking about Israel and how Israel trusted God. And when they trusted, they were delivered. So we can, in our knowledge of Scripture, remind ourselves of the good things that God has done. How does that bring praise? Well, when we remind ourselves of all the things that God has done, we remember that God created everything, and everything was good. Yet sin came in by us, but God did not stop he then brought his son to die for that sin. He, he first made a covenant with Israel through the law and then made a covenant through the, the blood of his son by grace. 
So we remember all the things that God has done and we praise Him for those things. And as we praise Him, we will see that God can be glorified even in difficulty. Look at Psalms 44. I think in order to praise God for the things He has done, we need to have a pretty good handle on Scripture. The more we read Scripture, the more we see God's redeeming efforts. Psalms 44 says, O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted, you afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor by their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. Seeing that we remember what God has already done. This helps us because we remember who God is. Look again in the text. Verse 3 says, yet you are holy. We remember to praise God by knowing what he's done, which helps us understand who he is. You say, well, what about what he's done for me? Sure, I can praise God what he's done for everyone else, but what about what he's done for me? Or the lack of what he's done for you? Is it possible that we could, in our current situation, instead of focusing on the problems, focus on God's provisions? Instead of what's going wrong, can we stop and thank God for what's going right? Will that make any difference if instead of just focusing on God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you given me this problem? Instead, focus on the things that are going well. Would that help us in our praise? Yes, it would. I wrote this down for letter B. I can remember God's specific blessings. I can remember God's specific blessings. In the 22nd Psalm, starting in verse 9, it says, Yet you are he who took me from the womb, giving God credit for life. You are me who, uh, you made me trust you at my mother's breath, giving God credit for faith. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Talking about credit for God supplying everything. So we can, as we look back to what God has done, we can look to what God has done for us. We have blessings to thank God for. And that requires a little bit of memory. I asked in the first service, let me ask you, who is more likely to lose their memory, men or women? Not even going to touch that one, are you? Do men... Lose their memory faster or do women? Because as we're talking about this, we, we realize we should have a pretty good knowledge of Scripture reminding ourselves of what God has done, but we also need to have a pretty good knowledge of what God has done for us, that we can remember the things that God has blessed us with. Because I don't know if it's like this for you, but sometimes for me, I am begging God to give me something that I really feel like I need, and I'm, I'm trusting Him for that. And then he gives me that which I ask. Do I say thank you? Or do I then look to other problems in my life? It almost seems like uh, I, I always come to God. And when I come to God, he answers that prayer. But as soon as he might answer that prayer, I forget to look at the blessing and start looking at some of the other problems. I know I'm not alone in this. Luke 18 uh, Luke 18, Jesus had just healed 10 lepers. And he says, um, specifically, look back, I'm sorry, Luke 17. In Luke 17, it says, Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his fa fa face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not 10 cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give God praise to accept this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. 
Think about that. If we were to, to carry that percentage on, would it mean that nine out of 10 people do not recognize the blessings that God has already given them? Would it mean in my life, 90% of the time, I look past the very blessings that God's give, given me and not then focus on the problems? But we should have a good memory of the blessings. I remember three brothers had moved into an apartment together and these three brothers, 92, 94, and 96 years old. These three brothers hanging out together, uh, one particular day came by and uh, one of the brothers says, I'm gonna go upstairs and draw a bath. Goes upstairs, fills up the bathtub, he gets ready to step in the bath and he stops and he says down to his brothers, hey, was I getting in the bathtub or getting out of the bathtub? And then one of the other brothers said, well, I'll come and help you. Starts walking up the stairs to the bathroom, stops halfway up, pauses for a moment, looks down and says, hey, was I going up the stairs or was I going down the stairs? To which the third brother, the youngest of the three, looks up and he said, you guys are pitiful. I am glad I have not been given such a terrible memory. Decides to knock on wood for good measure. I'll come out and straighten it out, but first I got to answer the door. And we might forget things. Might be that we don't spend enough time thanking God. But what difference would it make? If each day we focused on the things that God has given us. Take a look at this second video. I woke up this morning and was greeted by the sunrise. How would life be different if we could live each day praising God for the many blessings? Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits. And I know that many times in my life I, I focus on the things that are wrong, not the things that are right. In fact, it's interesting to me, it seems like when I experience pain, that that registers a bigger portion of my memory than when I experience pleasure. If you've ever broken a bone, you ever had the wind knocked out of you, you remember that event very specifically. It just, it seems to create a big memory when problems and pain enter our life, but yet when things go well, we almost treat it as if nothing happened. What difference would it make for us to spend time remembering God's specific blessings and remembering God's redemptive efforts? So we see David first encouraging us to look back at what God had done so that we might be able to praise him. The second thing he does, and you look again in the text, verse 19 now in Psalm 22, in verse 19, he now moves from looking back to now starts looking to what is now and what will be. Verse 19, but you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. So he's gone from remembering what God has done, and he's now looking forward to what God will do. I wrote that down for point number two. I can look ahead to what God will do. We can choose to praise God for what he's already done, getting our eyes off the problems and start recognizing God's provision. We can also look forward. Instead of looking for gloom and doom to happen, we can look for good things to take place. What do we call that? When a, a Christian looks forward, and as we look forward, we look for good things. We expect good things to happen. We call that hope. Faith is, is the substance of things that are hoped for, the assurance of things hoped for. But faith moving forward, we call hope. Faith and hope are very similar, but hope is a confidence in the future. Faith is a confidence in things that has happened and things that we maybe can't see. But hope is faith directed towards the future. What type of hope do we have? A pastor was preparing a sermon in his home, and one of his children, his daughter, came up about four years old, said, Daddy, Daddy, can you play with me? I said, no, sweetie, Daddy's working on his sermon. I'll be done in a little while, and we'll play then. She said, okay, Daddy, when you get done, I will give you a great big hug. She started to walk away, paused, turned back and grabbed him and just hugged him with a bone-breaking hug. He laughed and he said, sweetie, I thought you said you were going to hug me when I get done. She said, well, I wanted to give you something to look forward to. When we look forward, it's not a hope so as in maybe so but it is a confident expectation of good that's coming. And so when we have that hope, does that demonstrate an ability to praise God? As we look forward with confidence that good things are coming, does that give us the ability to praise God? So even though it's not yet, we know it's there. And so how do we have this hope? Well, I wrote it down this way under point number two. First, I can talk to a God who loves me. The foundation of hope is based upon prayer. If you look again in the text, verse 19 says, Deliver my soul from the sword, or verse 20, uh, my precious life from the power of the dog. Uh, specifically, David now turns from the problem he looked briefly at God's provision, but now he's moving to prayer. And prayer is what connects us to the hand of God. And when we pray, we're demonstrating hope. 
We don't throw our request up to God and say, God, I, I hope you do something with this. But we come and we say, God, you are holy. You answer according to your will. And a confidence that God will answer, we call hope. When we come to God, we come to God with great hope. 1 Peter 5 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And we see that prayer extends hope, and hope allows us to praise God. When we come to God, we ask God to bless us in matters, but we also build a relationship with God. So prayer is a means by which we have this hope. Hope is a means by which we have praise. Look at verse 22. And this is interesting to me. He's already said he feels abandoned. Already says he's discouraged with great despair. He momentarily focuses not on the problems but God's provisions and then uh, does he not just continue to focus on his problem but he gets past the problem he focused on the provisions and now he moves to focusing on the possibilities or the potential verse 22 I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation I will praise you you who fear the Lord praise him all you offspring of Jacob glorify him and stand in awe of him all ye offspring of Israel. So now he's speaking in the future tense, talking about what he will do. He says, I got to get my mind off my problems and look to God's provisions. When I get my mind off my problems and start recognizing my blessings, then I will praise him. Then he moves to prayer, not focusing back on his problems, but he comes with great hope, asking God to bless him. Think about this. He already feels like complete and total rejection, but he doesn't stop there. He still comes to God, says, God, help. Then from prayer, he moves to possibilities. He moves to the potential, and he starts praising God for what will be. I wrote it down this way, letter B. I can trust in a God who is good to me. Letter A, I can talk to a God who loves me. Letter B, I can trust in a God who is good to me. When we come to God by prayer, we exercise hope. When we exercise our hope, we are saying, God, you are good. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And we know that even though God may not give us what we think we need, we can recognize not only that God is good and whatever he gives us must be what we need, but we can always know even through the painful circumstances, God has a plan that is good. We can stop and we can courageously choose to praise him, not based upon the problem, but based on the potential that God has for that problem. Look at Psalm 71, if you would. And in Psalm 71, he talks about the way in which asking God leads to hope. Hope then turns to praise. Psalm 71, verse 12. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. May my accusers be put to shame and consumed. With scorn and di disgrace may they be covered who seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. He comes with a request and he, he doesn't just focus on his problems, but he now focuses on what God's going to do, the possibilities. What possibilities does God have for you. Romans 8 says it this way. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. 
for those who are called according to his purpose. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So we can talk to God because he loves us, but we can trust God because he is good to us. In other words, we know that God has good. He wants to give good. So we ask him, invite him to give us that which he wants to give. And even some of the things we may ask for, he does not give us, but we can still trust him because we know he's good. With this being said, the last thing I want to ask you as we wrap this up. When we praise God, especially through painful circumstances, there's something that's, that's unique. If you had someone, a follower of Christ, they had great wealth, great prosperity, great health. Everything was going well for this person. And they said, God is good. How many people do you think would take special note? This person's got prosperity, wealth. Good things are happening. And they say, God is good. How many people do you think takes a special note? On the other hand, let's say you have a follower of Christ that's experiencing difficulty. Maybe in the way of a loss of wealth. Maybe in a loss of health. Someone that is in tremendous pain. And they stop and say, God is good. How many people do you think stop and take note? What we need to realize is the reason why it's so important for us to praise God through the pain is not just for our benefit, which certainly there is great benefit, but also because it glorifies God, especially in our pain. Last thing I wrote down was this. My praise is very noticeable when I am hurting. My praise is very noticeable when I am hurting. When I'm going through difficulty, I have a better opportunity to glorify God through my praise than when I do when I'm going through prosperity. Take a look at this and see if it makes sense. What makes someone extraordinary? Their abilities? Their talents? Or simply their smile. When I first met Nick Vujicic, I knew I had just encountered someone extraordinary. From the moment he began to share his amazing story with me, I witnessed firsthand how God is using a man with no arms and no legs to be God's hands and his feet. My dad was saying that he was, you know, his head was next to my mum's head as, uh, as I was being born. And he saw my shoulder and he just went pale. He was hoping my mum didn't see me because he saw that I had no right arm. And my dad had to leave the room and he couldn't believe what he saw. And the doctor came in and, and my dad said, my son, he has no right arm. And he says, no, your son has no arms or legs. And he said he nearly fell on the floor. He couldn't believe it. And the whole church was mourning, you know, like, why would God let the pastor's son be born that way? And my mom, at first, she, just, she didn't want to hold me. She didn't want to, you know, breastfeed me and all that. Um, she just felt very uncomfortable for the first four months. And it took them quite a while before they could trust in God that he didn't make a mistake, that he didn't forget them or me. Nick's parents gave their fear and even disappointment in their son's disability over to the Lord. They chose to trust God and his promise that he had a plan and purpose, a hope and a future for their son. But as the years passed, Nick, on the other hand, had many challenges trusting in a God that he felt gave him less. I challenged God. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I won't probably have peace until you're in my heart, but I will not let you in my heart until you answer me why. Why did you take my arms and legs? Why didn't you give me what everybody else has? Then one day, Nick's mother had him read an article about a severely disabled man. 
And that man's story made a huge impact on Nick. <laughs> I have a choice to either be angry at God for what I don't have or be thankful for what I do have. And my mom, she said, Nick, God's going to use you. I don't know how, I don't know when, but God's going to use you. And those seeds started penetrating in my heart. And that's when I started seeing that there is no point in being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside. And I found out that God can heal you without changing the circumstance. I gave my life to Jesus Christ when I read John 9 at age 15, where a man was coming through a village and a man, um, this, this blind man from birth, Jesus saw him. People said, why was this man born that way? Jesus said it was done so that the works of God may be revealed through him. And in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, it says, all scripture is God breathed. And I believe God breathed in me life and faith. This faith came over me. This peace came over me. And I felt like God answered my question. And what was the question and what was the answer? The question was why? Why did you make me this way? And the answer was, do you trust me? It all comes to a choice. I don't probably know all the pain that you're facing, the difficulties that are in your life, but we can choose to praise God. We can choose even in our difficulty, especially in our difficulty, to trust God and to praise Him. And when we make that choice, God is especially glorified. Would you pray with me? Father, many times we come to you and ask why. We don't understand why things have happened or why the pain is in our life. And many times we're in despair, great discouragement, like David in writing this 22nd Psalm. Father, give us the courage to make a choice to praise you through this pain. Whatever we might be facing, God, we come to you with great courage to say you are holy, you are good. And through this, Father, although we may not have the answer to why this has happened or why this is going on, we do know that we can praise you and we choose to do that. Give us that courage, we ask, in Christ's name. And God's people said,